The following story is also available as a read-only version. Check the link in the description if you're interested. This wasn't her bed. This wasn't her apartment. This wasn't home. Instead of the lovely pumpkin colour Lara had painted it when she first moved in, the ceiling was grey. The walls were not that beautiful shade of azure that reminded her of the water in Greece. They were merely a different shade of grey. The mattress was not hard and unyielding, but perfectly matched her figure. Lara Emily Suspedes, please confirm your name. Lara jerked up, looking around the room. Though there was no daylight, it was well lit. No dark corners, no speakers. No person. Lara Emily Suspedes, please confirm your name, the voice repeated. She couldn't tell whether it was a man or a woman speaking. That is my name, she said, probing. I'm asking you, the voice said. Is that your name? It seemed to be coming from everywhere at once. Yes, it is. What do you want from me? Where am I? You're aboard a seat ship with no name. It is not necessary for you to know it. There are many more seat ships than there are names, the voice explained. I'm aboard a ship? Lara thought for a moment. Had she been drinking last night? Or was this a dream? It had to be a dream. A powerful, vivid dream, but in the end just a convincing hallucination. Then again, people who were dreaming rarely question the dreams they are in. Where is this ship headed, then? Its name is barely more than a number. It is protocol to let the colonists decide upon a name themselves, as it reinforces the sense of ownership of the new world they conquer. Forget it, I don't care. Turn this ship around to Massachusetts, I have a thesis to work on, Lara declared slipping out of the strange bed. Unlike most mornings, she felt oddly alive, powerful even. The weirdness of the situation notwithstanding, she might have said that she felt great. I'm afraid that will not be possible. The voice did not sound the least bit apologetic. However, your virtual workspace has been transferred to your cabin systems, so work on your thesis can continue unhindered. However, you might wish to consult our library. The scientific knowledge in your simulation was a few hundred millennia behind on the topic of genetics. Come again? Lara was too confused to even frown. The scientific knowledge in your simulation was a few hundred millennia behind on the topic of genetics, the voice repeated. It sounded exactly the same as last time. The fuck do you mean simulation? Indeed was the answer, as though that explained everything. Your life thus far has been a simulation. Most characters and events in it are fictional. Others are historical, with a few liberties taken where necessary. For example, when you reached maturity but still had not come to the conclusion that the world around you was a simulation, some famous individuals you admired hinted at the nature of your reality. Unfortunately, you did not pick up the hints. W she could not speak. The word what did not seem appropriate somehow. I'm stupid? She heard herself ask, unsure why this was the first question that came to mind. It is uncommon but not unusual for an individual to never realise that they are in a simulation. You will suffer no systemic drawbacks from this fact. My parents? They're not real? Lara could feel a gaping hole of pain open up inside her, but it was still covered with white linen, like a painting that was yet to be unveiled. She knew it was there, but she couldn't see it. They were. Your genetic material has been assembled from two of the greatest individuals humankind has ever produced. Your mother was a molecular chef that revolutionized cuisine as we know it, not the manager of a roadside diner. Your father was a world-renowned neurosurgeon, not a small-town veterinarian. 
The two never met in real life. Laura felt nothing. Where there had been a creeping feeling of existential horror, there was now nothing at all. What is happening to me? she asked. In anticipation of how you might react to such a monumental revelation, you have been sedated for your own comfort. Do not worry, you will be able to work through this trauma in time. But where's my mom? How was I born? You were born in this bed. It is not a bed, but a unit that has formed, fed, and sheltered you for the past 25 years. Wait, why would you simulate the 21st century when the knowledge from back then was so woefully outdated? There it was, the logical part of a brain, taking over full control. You have learned many skills in your unconscious mind by way of dreaming. Sleeping and dreaming was invented to separate the conscious from the unconscious mind. Your waking time was to build your personality and to make you familiar with the world. Well, I can never remember my dreams, so I guess all that futuristic knowledge isn't anywhere around here. Lara made a motion encircling her head. You will learn to meld your conscious and unconscious mind over the course of the coming year, the voice explained. After this time has passed, deployment will begin and you will have to build the basic infrastructure to refuel this ship and send it on its way so that it may continue seeding new planets. So let me get this straight. My whole life wasn't real. I'm going to become some superhuman uber being over the course of the next year, and then I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life on some weird, potentially hostile alien hellhole. No, the voice answered. Instead of an explanation, Lara got a window. The entire wall to her right became transparent in an instant, and what she saw took her breath away. Down there, packed in a nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere, Herds of clouds rolling over the continents was a collection of familiar shapes and outlines. It was Earth, perfect and pristine, untouched by man, ready to be taken. This ship has been in orbit for 30 years. The world you will be colonizing is one you are already very familiar with. You already consider it home. Now it is up to you and your peers to make it so. If you liked this story and would like to hear more, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. A new short story is uploaded every Wednesday, and there will occasionally be another one in between if I find the time. Thank you very much for listening and have a great day.